Praise God. I am so humble. I am short of words. Just a few moments ago, I, I was thinking about my life and where I came from, my background. And then I had to think about me standing before honorable people today. And I, I say in my heart that really, God is awesome. Uh, I was born in a slum. I was born in the ghetto. <laughs> I never, I, I have never, since starting from the day I was born, the devil has made sure that I remain in the dungeon, that I remain in the ghetto. My, my parents were, they, when, you talk, when you talk about poverty, they were poverty personified. They were poor and poor people. And then um, I grew up like that. And then even the day I was born, I was told my parents used to be traders. And then on the day I was born, there was a fire outbreak in the market where they sell, and all their goods were completely destroyed by fire. So when I came to this world, it was very difficult for my mother to find food to eat to breastfeed me. And you can imagine what I have been through from childhood. But thank God that today, as I stand here, I have not only become a pillar in my family, I have also become a pillar in the house of God. Amen. God has turned my life dramatically and then has given me a blessings that words cannot express. And I have been through a lot. I, I, I became a drug addicted person. I was in heroin and, and all kinds of all kinds of drugs, but through the miraculous power of God, I was delivered and God made me a clean person. I have, I have a lot of testimony. My life entirely is a testimony. Every day I live is a testimony. But today I want to focus my testimony on something that happened some time ago that would have been the end of my life. If God had not intervened, I wouldn't have stand before you today to, to, to share this testimony. And I thank God for making me and giving me the grace to be a member of Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International because it has given me a voice and has empowered me to share with people what God has done in my life. Some time ago, during my sojourn in several places around the world, I had a contact with a business partner from Saudi Arabia, but he was resided in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And then uh, we had to go meet him over there for a business discussion. I traveled with a partner of mine. And then we got there, and then uh, one of the days, he invited us over to his house for a dinner. And we went there. We were just about uh, starting the discussion when his younger brother came into the house. And uh, you know, when we were in Iran, you could, you could just stand there, and then you are the only black person visible around there, and everybody could just look up and then I, I know that this is a different person. So when he came into the room and saw us, he was shocked. And then he called his brother, we were speaking in Arabic. But I do understand a little Arabic because I've been uh, most times in, Ara in Arab countries. And he told his brother that these are the same people, that there were two of them who came sometime and defrauded them of some huge amount of money. And that he, he is very sure that these are the same people. And if, if it is not the same people, they must be related. So it was a huge problem. And then at the end of the day, they got us arrested and we were put in jail. In the Islamic Republic of Iran, they use Sharia as their, as their law. And they don't speak English. Neither do I and my partner know how to speak Farsi. Their language is called Farsi. And then we were taken to court. And the people who are the judges and lawyers are the mullahs with their long beards and, and everything. And we are just all the people amongst them. We we'll go to court without understanding the word, they, they, they send us to a vain prison. A vain prison is one of the most uh, difficult, one of the highest prisons in the Islamic Republic of Iran, of which if their president should have a problem today, that's where they, they will put it. It's a highly secured uh, prison. And then we were put there, we didn't know what our offenses are. Nobody came for us, we had nobody. We, we don't even understand whatever they have said. We don't know what our charges are. We don't know anything. So when we, when we went to this prison, we've been there for several days, and we are asking 
we met people who speak English in the prison, and then we are asking them about, you know, look at what has happened to us, and uh, what do you think will be our fate? They, they told us that what they are charging us is fraud, and that is called in the, in the Iranian language, Kolabadare. And Kolabadare means that uh, when you are charged for fraud, the, the judge has the power to give you about seven years imprisonment. And after which, you will pay the, um, that certain amount of money being charged, you will pay it to the, to the complainant and pay the same amount to the government of Iran. And that's a huge amount of money. And the funniest part of it all is that if you don't pay it, you won't get out of prison. You could be there for 40 years or 50 years until the day you pay the money and complete. That's the day you will get out. So uh, my life was finished. I thought that that was the end of my life. But thank God that I had a New Testament Bible in my pocket. And when they asked me, I said, is English Quran? So I uh, in every, morning, every morning we had to, I, I met a couple of black people in the, in the prison and we, every morning I gathered them, we would sing and pray and then we would read the, we read the Bible. Then I met a young man who is a black person. He has been there for several years and he told me that, look, uh, you have to just relax because you are not getting out of here uh, anytime soon. So uh, maybe in the next few years, I will be released. So when, I, when I'm when i released, I will take a message to your people and let them know where you are. No. That is to tell you the kind of frustration that I was, I was facing. I never believed that I would be out. And then we were just there. One day we had an opportunity to, to use the prison uh, phone booth there's a way they get an international calling kind of smuggling to the prison and we had to make a call. But I thank God for my mother who is a born again, thanks became Christian. So when I had that opportunity, I called home and uh, as, God, as, the Lord, as God may have it, I got my mother on the phone. I told, I told her, ordinarily, I don't want to put pressure on my mother. I wouldn't have uh, told her what the condition I am in, but something pushed me and I just told her, Mommy, I am in prison. And then... She was, she was calm for a while, but the Spirit of God entered and she told me, my son, be calm, God will bring you out. That was the only thing she said to me. And then time, the time was up and then I was put off the, the, the telephone. So I went back there. Two weeks after, I and my partner, we had our names and they said Azad. Azad means freedom. Azad, freedom. So we didn't believe it. And we went to the head of the prisoners and we asked, he said, no, you don't be in a hurry to leave here. Just relax. Let me go down to the office and find out. He went to the office. To make it short, we were actually released. There was no lawyer. Nobody came for us. I didn't know what to say. I cannot explain how we happened. And when we get out of there, we went back to the hotel where we were, where we stayed before we got into that project. They had to call in the police because they didn't believe that we would be released. And when we go back to the courts to pick up our passports, the judges there and everybody, they were all short, and they were in the emergency meeting on how to find out what happened, why these people were. Because it, it has never happened in the history of that place that people who are charged with this kind of offense will just be released within two, and we stayed about two months and 12 days in, in there. And that was how it happened. And the Lord released me from there. I would have spent more than 20 years because if I had served the jail time of seven years and then I would be asked to pay that amount of money, I wouldn't have found that money anywhere. And nobody even knew where I was. No, nobody ever came for us. There was no chance for anybody to know what was happening to us. And here am I today. God brought me out miraculously. So without that, I wouldn't have been able to be in Ghana, let alone a prosper businessman fellowship international. So I thank God for bringing me here. I came to this fellowship by a invitation of an old friend of mine who invited me. Then I, I came. The first day I came to this place, I was on my way coming and my car got broken down. So I left it there and came to fellowship. After fellowship, the brother who invited me informed the president and some of the team that my car is parked on the road as spoiled. And to my amazement, the president personally followed us to where my car was. I was even in a hurry. I left the car there and, and, and went home. I was sleeping around 11 p.m. When the brother called me and told me, even the president spoke with me and said, oh, we are still here, but don't worry. Hey, relax, we have taken care of your car. We have moved it from where it was. And I was like, wow, what kind of people is this? 
because I, from all standards, the president is a wealthy man, and I've come across some wealthy people and how proud and pride they are. But this is a, a humble man who, at around 11 p.m., was outside trying to fix a car of a small rat like me, who <laughs> just met just for one day. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Because of that, I decided that these are the kind of people I need in my life, and lo and behold, today. We encourage you if you are here, and today is an opportunity for you to join yourself, align yourself with the right kind of people. And if you are here, I don't know what you are going through, I don't know the kind of prison you find yourself, or any kind of problem that you find yourself. God who delivered me from the Islamic Republic of Iran without a lawyer, without paying a dime, without anybody coming from me, that same God is here to take care of me. That is my